We have been working um, on an issue that is very important to our community and this uh, city, this county, and this state. Today, I signed an executive order governing the release of body camera recordings of officer-involved critical incidents. The policy states that 10 business days after the OICI, the body camera recordings will be classified as a public record, barring any unusual or unforeseen circumstances. With the classification such as this, recordings can be released pursuant to grandma request. You will recall in January, my office put out a draft statement for public comment. We have engaged stakeholders, including the ACLU and the district attorney, who I am grateful is here with us today and made changes to reflect the feedback we were given. Government should always strive to be responsive to the needs of residents while holding to values such as due process. I believe this policy carefully balances the need for transparency while providing due process for investigations. We know that nationwide municipalities are dealing with the issue of the release of body camera recordings. It is a conversation we take seriously in Salt Lake City, and this policy reflects our continuing efforts to ensure transparency. More and more video recordings are becoming part of the national narrative on police community relations. By having a policy in place which favors transparency, we can help eliminate unwarranted suspicion toward our law enforcement brothers and sisters and investigative agencies while we continue this important dialogue that we have been having. I'd now like to turn some time over to Sim Gill if he would like to say a few words. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, again, I just want to echo uh, the comments that the mayor made, that this has been a collaborative effort. We worked together. Uh, we were working on this actually several weeks ago. We met again. And from the district attorney's perspective, our, our commitment uh, we share with the mayor, which has always been about transparency, getting this information out to our community as soon as possible, while at the same time making sure the critical aspect of investigative uh, uh, work needs to be done. And this uh, ordinance, uh, this uh, executive order, excuse me, uh, ma uh, captures that as well as uh, other concerns. And I think that together, this actually uh, is an opportunity, was an opportunity for us to slow down and do what is right for us as Salt Lake City. When you think about it nationally, it goes from immediate release to no release at all. And for us, we had to come up with a workable, transparent, objective policy that preserved the interest of investigation, as well as uh, keeping full faith and credit to our citizens to have access to these issues, which are of grave concern to them. And this rule that we have now is a workable approach, which can serve as a great guideline for the rest of the uh, cities in our valley here as well. So I want to thank the mayor and the mayor's staff for working with us and, uh, and really coming together with a workable policy, which I think will be in the benefit of everyone involved, the investigations, the officers, and the community at large. So thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any questions for us? Sim? Go ahead. Sim, you go. Some of the most, I guess, the videos that are released or take the longest to release, most controversial, the ones where there's an officer involved shooting uh, against a person who is led to have committed a crime, and that person is injured but does not die. And you've always said that's part of the evidence and we can't release it. Are those videos going to be released in 10 days? Well, uh, right now, I think under our policy, the most critical part is to make sure we get the investigation done. And also, this uh, policy recognizes that if there are unforeseen circumstances where we need to either follow up with the investigative process, because you, each OICI has its own complexity, and some of them can be a little bit drawn out, but it recognizes if those investigations are uh, need to be finished, that we will do that. And as far as any other issues that are concerned, that we, we looked at it from a position of investigation, and, and then as we move forward, if there are other issues, then we will address those issues in due course. But right now, I think the commitment really was to make sure can we have a workable rule that get, uh, recognizes the need from our community as well as our investigative process, and this balances to meet that. But is it 
it seems like uh, unusual or unseen circumstances is a pretty broad general category. Yeah, so what we foresee is that coming up rarely, that the city really will be falling back to a transparency position unless something significant arises. Uh, again, uh, so take for example, if we have an incident that happens in the community where the officer is injured or, or, or key witnesses are injured and we can't get access to them for the par process of our investigative process within this timeline, and we want to be able to finish that. So it would be those kind of scenarios where uh, uh, there are circumstances that would impede the uh, investigative process. So like the, the shooting over at the at homeless shelter, would, that have, would this new policy make that video come uh, public any quicker? I think that uh, certainly that uh, this Florida certainly speeded that up. I would agree that it would. Did, did the okay. pressure from the public have anything to do with this executive order? <laughs> and uh, also, what is, is Chief Brown? Uh, where is he? He's here. Um, so we, um, like I said, we have been looking at this since January, trying to um, get community input, uh, feedback from um, the ACLU and other key interest groups to create a policy that was meaningful, that addresses the time and era we are living in, and also that I felt would uh, alleviate some of the suspicion of our community on law enforcement and their actions um, that really isn't necessary. And so I think this policy weighs out uh, pretty well and has been vetted very heavily by the community as well as other interested parties that are involved. Yeah. Yeah, so I think it's important to recognize the issue isn't, and I've said this before, and I know the mayor has shares the same concerns, the issue isn't about sharing information with our community. It's recognizing that we have to balance the interests of an investigative process, and it tries to balance that investigative process within the use of force, as well as to make sure that uh, we are as quickly as transparent as we can. So the 10-day rule, I think, is a good balance between that. Keep in mind that as when we research this out it, uh, around the country, it goes from uh, very quick to no release at all. So we had to come up with a workable rule for Salt Lake City and for our community as a whole, and this tries to strike that critical balance between those competing interests. Well, uh, like the di district attorney is saying is, look, we also are balancing a due process element here. And I want to make sure that uh, what the community is hearing is that we are working toward being more transparent. And um, we have found a place where uh, we feel like we have that uh, buy-in at this particular juncture in in a process that says due process is intact, t transparency is available, and um, that we are weighing some public interest issues here.